Hello and welcome to today's video. So today I want to talk to you about fasting, gut health and immunity. And these are three, I think you could probably say these are three of maybe the most like buzzwordy, like clickbaity topics because they're, they're, they're so important and they get talked about a lot. But maybe not in context with each other. And that's kind of a little bit what about what I want to do today. Is I want to put these things into context. I want to put them into context with each other. So how your gut health influences your immunity. How immunity influences fasting. How fasting influences these other two things. I want to talk about this, this connection. Because it's, it's really strong. It's a really strong connection. Even in alternative medicine there's an understanding of the body being a holistic organism and that it doesn't ha doesn't actually have organ systems it's one holistic thing but we still have to talk about it in terms of systems you know like we see your gut and we talk about that and we see your immune system and we talk about that and we're like oh yes and you have a cardiovascular system and you have your microbiome and we compartmentalize these things so that we can talk about it and it's useful because I need to talk about it today so this helps me with talking about this but the truth is your body is completely holistic like it it doesn't have an immune system it doesn't have a it doesn't have gut health like it just it, it is one organism and everything influences and affects everything else and fasting is a really powerful way to reset this whole mechanism like how all of these systems interface with each other but there's a particularly interesting connection between the gut and the immune system and I want to really blow your mind with that today I want you to to finish today's video and think hmm when am I going to schedule my next fast because this is something I should do this is something I need to do so gut health Gut health, immunity, and fasting. What's the connection? So, you've probably heard this this phrase before. And if you haven't, then you, you must be new to the internet, so welcome. 80% of your immune system is in your gut. And this is a really interesting idea, especially when you try and look at it through the lens of understanding that you have like two main branches of your immune system. You've got your kind of innate immune system this is like your white blood cells your macrophages you're like like your cells particularly like inside your body so you think about your body as a castle it's like inside the castle you know you've got like the villagers and the cooks and the the shepherds and all the people that live in the castle you know this is these are like your this is like your internal immune system and your castle has this wall that it uses to protect itself and this is your mucosa and you can find your mucosa on your body by looking anywhere that is wet so if you like you touch your eyes like you feel they're wet i'm not suggesting you poke your eye but they're they're wet right and your tongue and your whole digestive system your lungs like anywhere on your body that is wet you have a mucosa and the place that you have the most immunity is where you have mucosa and this is like your gut to a to a huge extent your lungs also as well they have a very large surface area but we're really looking in the gut because this is where most of your immune cells are and where they live so you've got you've got storehouses of your of your innate immune system of like your macrophages and and and, and like your own immune cells in your lymphatic system and you've got some some big ducts just here you've got some some here You've got some on the insides of your of your of your legs, like in your in your groin area, and all the way down the sides of your abdomen, and they basically all drain into your gut. They all drain, like basically into your gut. Your gut is like where they 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 exit. That's like where they they empty to. So you think of your lymphatic system like this sewage system of your body, and you might think like sewers are gross, but sewers are actually super important. You know, there's a there's a funny there's a funny saying that plumbers have saved more lives than doctors and it's true because the hygiene that plumbers bring us prevents so much disease so much more than doctors could like cure or treat and the same is true in your body your lymphatic system does so much work it's the seat of your of your immune system and it's and it all drains into your gut and your gut is actually 
like a huge lymphatic like organ like there's a so much lymphatic system around your gut so in particular we want to look in the small intestine in the like the lower half of the small intestine so your small intestine is split into like three main sections you've got the duodenum which is like the top bit just right where your stomach empties into then you've got the jejunum and the ileum these are like the the sections that we're looking more at today so it's like the the second half of the jejunum and the and the ileum which is like the bit that's just before your large intestine this part of your gut is covered in lymphatic nodes there's lots of different types there's some that have been more well studied some less but you don't really need to know these details i'm just saying because this is kind of interesting for me it's a bit bit nerdy i kind of geeked out a bit on this but you've got a, you've got a whole bunch of different lymph nodes in this area and these lymph nodes hold all of your all of your immune cells they're where all of the toxins are like draining from your lymphatic system you've got a lot if you're ever having like a like a a cold or a flu or say you get like food poisoning i had food poisoning recently like your immune system is super active in your gut so even if you're not having a directly gut based thing you can still get constipation diarrhea like you might get ill and maybe you, you know you're eating less than you usually do but you're getting really bloated and gassy and you're like where's this coming from like this doesn't make any sense i'm hardly even eating anything how can i be having so much bloating and gas and this is actually because your immune system is massively active during this time and and so much of your your immune system is in your gut I know when I'm getting sick, one of the first things I start to feel is my tolerance for foods begins to reduce slightly. So I can pretty much eat whatever I want without restriction, you know? I've been on a really restricted diet of five foods for five years in, in my chronic illness recovery process. And I reached a point where I could eat anything that I wanted, really, completely unrestricted. And I picked up some viral load, some, some colds, some flu, some things my body just couldn't get on top of. And my digestive capacity would decrease. It's like, okay, I can't tolerate this. Or I have to be more careful here. I can't handle this as much. And it like directly impacted it. And it was, and it, and it was like, this isn't gut related. You know, when I'm looking at gut health, I look at it through the lens of the five pillars, the five primary core functions of the digestive system, stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile, motility, mucosa. I was like, these things are okay. You know, these pillars are working. They're functioning fine. What is affecting my level of digestive capacity? Because it's not, it's not the foods that I'm eating. It's not my, my actual gut health, like looking at your gut as that compartmentalized system. It's like some other system is influencing this somewhere. And it was actually my immune system. My immune system was trying to clear a backlog of jobs, of work, of infections, of intoxins, of all of these different things that it accumulated over the years whilst having a chronic, a chronic disease that it hadn't been able to get on top of. And it was kind of bringing these out of the foundations, like, look, oh, look, we've got some space now. Like, we can, we don't have so many chronic problems. We should work on some of these old things that we've packed away and sealed, like, in the bottom of the basement to never look at because it's not as important. And now it's like, oh, we have to look at this. This is relevant. So all of this is, is coming out. And this affects your gut in a really interesting way. And if you don't know about this connection between your immune system and your gut, you will just be left scratching your head thinking, what is going on? And that's what I want to share with you today. There is a very strong connection. So anytime your immune system is being worked, anytime you have a cold, a flu, anytime you're doing some more detox, like your gut is going to feel it. Your gut is going to be the place where you're going to be impacted the most. And if you've got an iron gut, you know, I actually think I have quite a strong gut, all things considered. You may not perceive it with symptoms or anything like that but just know your gut is doing a lot of, a lot of work it's doing so much work your gut is like the foundation it's like the roots of a tree you know it's doing all the all the nutrient absorption like there's so much work happening there even a tree has got this complex micro microbial web all over it of different types of bacteria and fungus and they're all working together with the tree and with the other trees around it to give it the nutrients and to communicate with it and make it function. And the same thing is happening inside of your gut as well. You've got all of these different complex microbes and this diversity of like in a healthy person, like 200, like 2.5 thousand plus different organisms. Like, could you imagine sitting in a room with 2,500 people? Could you imagine how many people that is? 
you've got that many different types of species of bugs in your gut. If you've got gut problems, maybe it's less, you know, the diversity is directly correlated with health. So if your health's a bit down, maybe your diversity's a bit down as well. But even still, it's a phenomenal level of, of diversity. And there's different bacteria and viruses and flukes and worms and archaea and methanogens and protozoa and all these different things that are all actually conspiring together with your body to help you adapt and survive in your environment as much as they possibly can. They're, they're like your allies. They're, they're working for you and with you to take care of you because you take care of them. You know, you feed them with the food you eat. You feed them with the mucosal secretions. You feed them with your environment. You feed them with your emotions as well. And that's maybe a, maybe a bit out there, but it's, it's true. So I'll say it. So how do we tie fasting into this? Like where does fasting come in and why is it something I want to talk about with the, with the understanding of this connection between the gut and the immune system. And it's, it's, it's a very powerful one. And there's maybe a little sidetrack that I'm going to go on in just a moment about talking maybe a bit about diet and how we can incorporate intuitive eating into this. Because I think intuitive eating has been very powerful for me. And it's really helped me improve the quality of my fasts. So how is it, how, why, is it, why is this worth talking about? Fasting is like a reset for your body. It allows it to stop digesting food and focus all of that energy that your body would use for digestion on other jobs, like cleaning, like repairing, like detox, like immunity and immune reset. It just allows your body to kind of spring clean. You know, it can go deep in the crevices. You know, like when you clean your house, you just like give it a quick squiz. You know, you're like, you're clean the floor a little bit, wipe the table, and you're like, okay, it's presentable. But every three months, every six months, you have to like move the tables. You have to like get all of the things off the shelves. You have to dust in, in the fine lines. You know, you have to take the whole fridge out and like clean all of the shelves. You know, you have to like give it a deep clean. And your, your body needs this too. Like your body can do a little bit of this cleaning every single day when you're asleep or when you're doing just say you've, you've eaten a meal and it's been seven hours before you've eaten another meal because life life's happening, you know? I don't, I don't know. Your body's doing some of that that little cleaning, you know? It's like, oh, there's a, you didn't use a coaster. There's like a stain on the table. Like, let's clean that up. It can do that. But the deeper stuff, you know, the stuff that's like when the stuff falls down the side of the fridge or like behind the oven, you know, that stuff needs to get cleaned as well. Otherwise, it builds up and it affects the functioning of your body. So when we have a... When we, when we fast, what we do is, I always use this analogy of the kitchen. Like you can see I've used a lot of kitchen and now like appliances here. Because your body is kind of like a kitchen. And you think about a kitchen, like the main job of a kitchen is, you like you cook, prepare and potentially eat the food. So this, this process like is like the main function of the kitchen, you know, and this takes up so much of your energy. When your gut is in like an active state of digestion, so with, from... I would say 10 minutes before eating, if you know you're going to be eating, to four, five, maybe even, yeah, I'd say maybe five hours after eating, your body is using a, an enormous amount of energy. It's, it's diverting energy from all of the different systems in your body into break this food down, digest it, absorb it, assimilate it, send it where it needs to go. It's in this process and this takes up so much, so many resources. And when you don't eat, all of those resources they don't just disappear. They don't just get wasted. Your body's like, let's redirect them into doing all of these other deep cleaning jobs that we haven't been able to do. So it goes and it cleans everything. And you see this in the like two main areas that you see this are the gut and the immune system. And that's and and there's a there's a very strong connection between both of both of these and how this how this cleaning works. So first of all, you're not putting food in your digestive system. So you've got that energy spare. Your digestive system gets a break. You know, your intestine is working all the time. Your stomach is is basically constantly secreting acid. Your liver is always working to produce new bile. Your gallbladder is storing it. Your microbes are working. Your gut is like trying to repair itself all the time. Like if you've got a really healthy gut, perfect microbiome, you have a brand new gut lining every four days. Like that is like insane you know you think oh it's the same gut because you just wake up the next day but it's like you basically have a new gut twice a week like that's crazy and that turnover does 
it can be damaged, you know, it can go to seven days, can go to 10 days, two weeks. Even if you have like the worst Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, really bad gut flora damage, you know, ulcerations, like you still have a new gut every two weeks. Like your your gut tissue is the fastest turning over tissue in your in your body. It's constantly regenerating. And because of this, like giving it even a little break, you know, like a one day, like 24 hours without eating, the turnover in cells in your gut is insane. Like the amount of like improvements in say like leaky gut intestinal permeability is like enormous. If you if you did a a leaky gut test before and after a 24 hour fast, you would you would be mind blown with how much of a difference just 24 hours with, without eating does for your gut. Not only this, but your body is very intelligent and when it's fasting it's in a state where it isn't being provided with energy and it's going to use your body's reserves of energy as it as it's able to but it does this in an intelligent way you know it's not like oh we've been fasting for 16 hours we're going to go and start like deconstructing the brain and take all of these healthy cells and destroy them and then turn them into energy that's not how it works your body's really smart so what it does is it systematically goes through and it says okay look we've got this these fat stores that we have in this area of the body that hold this fat soluble toxin we want to break this down. Like, we're going to work on this now. We're going to clean this out. So it burns that fat for fuel and releases those toxins and it metabolizes those toxins. And then it says, oh, no, to metabolize this toxin, we need this protein. It's like, should we break down our muscle tissue or should we go into the gut and, and attack this bacteria that's been causing some dysbiosis that has a, an abundance of this protein inside of its structure, inside of its makeup? So the immune system is like, cool, let's go. It activates, it goes into the gut. It's like, okay, we need these proteins. Like, we need these proteins right now. So let's break these bacteria down. And the immune system is just like like eating them. It just it just goes through and just system systematically eats these organisms in the gut that it needs for these resources. And it does this in an intelligent way. You know, it's not going to go in and eat all of your probiotics and all of your healthy organisms. Like, if there's a, a pathogen or an organism that's not ideal in this circumstance it's like okay let's go and eat that like let's go and, let's go destroy that organism let's clear that out of our gut and use it for fuel and like that's burn that and it's in the in, in the analogy is kind of like you're taking your garbage you're taking your rubbish and you're like burning it in an incinerator to produce energy so it's like you take this waste this thing that's actually contributing to disease to sickness and your body because it's so smart incinerates it and turns it into energy and turns it into health and it uses that to detox. It's like mind blown, it's crazy. So your gut's getting this break. Your immune system is is functioning in this in this capacity. After a couple of days, so say you reach, a, I think it's about 36 hours into a fast. And I wouldn't recommend everybody do this. I think 36 hours is a really nice point to stop. I think 36 hours is like the best, it's like the optimal fasting time for like on average, 24 to 36 hours, I think is like the, the like the sweet spot where you get like 80% of the benefits and like v and very little drawbacks or side effects. And obviously this is something that you have to play by ear. This is something that you have to know is right for you because there's always caveats and exceptions and fasting is, as I'm talking about, is very powerful. It can be quite intense. So you have to know what's right for you. But I find the sweet spot, like the, the optimal time is like the 24 to 36 hours. And yeah, there are other benefits. Like when you go past 36 hours, your immune system is going to start resetting on an even deeper level. So your immune cells, especially the ones that are like tired out or broken or damaged, they're going to start recycling. They're just going to break down. And your immune system actually kind of starts to come down after that. And this is because your immune system is very expensive. You, you can imagine keeping your body safe against all of these pathogens and all these environmental exposures is, is like one of the most expensive things that your body does. And if you're fasting, you're depriving it of energy. It's going to try and shut down all of these high energy systems. So it starts to turn these things off. And this can be cool because when they turn back on, they can turn on more powerfully and they can create new immune cells. But that's kind of like another, another thing. That's not really where, we, where we're going today. We're looking at the benefits maybe up to 36 hours. So it has this really strong effect in your gut of altering your microbiome composition. You know, your, your body will strategically and intelligently target organisms that it doesn't want to be in your gut anymore, and it will kill them. And this works for bacteria, for yeast, for uh, viruses, for 
like SIBO, like all a anything. Like your body is intelligent. It is smart. It, it knows how to fix itself. It just usually isn't provided the space. That's that's often what is causing disease. The body has intrinsic self healing mechanisms. We're just holding it away from doing them. So if we can give it the space to do these things, it it does them. So this improving of the gut integrity and and um, rebalancing of the microbiome composition is is profound. Like I know many people that have like gut based like so they have like diseases that are rooted in the gut, but they manifest elsewhere. Skin problems, autoimmune diseases like like or, like arthritis and joint pains in say like the wrists, elbows, ankles, anxiety, depression, all of these things that are actually gut based do a one out like a one day fast because it changes the composition of the microbiome and improves the integrity of the gut lining like that quickly, you can see remission of these symptoms like, almost immediately. And it doesn't mean that they're going to stay gone forever because what often happens is as you start eating again, the body has to reprioritize doing all of these other jobs. And it's like, okay, we need to do digestion now. And then the gut lining gets a bit irritated and then, and then maybe these things come back on, but it's a really cool way to reset. And you're doing some of this deep cleaning and your body only has so much deep cleaning that it needs to do. So if we can just keep repeatedly providing it with opportunities to go in and do the deep cleaning consistently, it will finish all of these jobs and it will get to the point where you can then reintroduce the food and then the symptoms don't happen. So really cool, really cool um, way to implement this into your life. This is something similar to what I've been doing recently. And again, not for everyone, but this is a really cool way you can do it. First of all, you need to be eating in a calorie excess. Fasting is not about creating a calorie deficit. Like calorie deficits will destroy your metabolism. They will they will negatively affect your 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 body's ability to actually regulate its weight. So you see that people that do long-term calorie restriction, they often are overweight and cannot lose weight no matter how much they restrict. I've had overweight clients that eat a Snickers bar a day, like that's all they eat for the whole day, and they're and they're still overweight. Weight gain isn't about calories; it's it's so much more about the metabolic health of your body, your hormones, and all these things. So, long term calorie restriction is not the goal here. So, a calorie excess is important. You need to have extra fuel to burn. When you're fasting, your body will be able to get so much more work done if it has resources available to it. This includes micronutrients and macronutrients. So it needs to be well nourished from a nutrient perspective. You know, it needs all of its vitamins and its minerals. It needs the right gut bugs. It needs all of these things, but it also needs calories. You know, calories are like the currency that your body uses to pay for every single function that happens. Every time you produce a molecule of stomach acid, it costs a calorie. Every time you create a new digestive enzyme, it costs a calorie. Every time you move one toxin through your phase one and then your phase two liver detox pathway, it costs calories. If your body doesn't have caloric energy, it cannot do any of these things. So the whole point of fasting isn't about creating a calorie deficit. It's about provide excess calories and then create a space where your body isn't having to prioritize the work of digestion and it can take these excess calories that we've eaten in the time that we have been eating and allocate them to other jobs, to these like deep cleaning jobs, to reset the gut, you know, clear these microbes out, to um, reset all of your digestive machinery. You know, you don't eat for 24 hours, say, your digestive enzymes are like replenished, like they're full. Your body has all the digestive enzymes it needs for the next meal because it's been, it's had the opportunity to build them up and store them. Your bile is going to be ready to go. You know, your, your liver is going to have been working on creating new bile this whole time. It's going to be ready. You're going to have a higher tolerance for fat immediately after you do a fast. Your gut lining and integrity is much better. You're going to have brush border enzymes available. Your body is just like, it, it's had time to prepare for that next meal that you're going to provide it. So you get this this gut reset, but you also get this reset of of any time you're so again kitchen analogy. Imagine trying to prepare a meal in a kitchen where all of the dishes are just like they're full of they're full in the sink, and you've cut your hair like you cut your kid's hair, and there's just hair all over the floor, and the dog food got knocked over, and it's just this big mess. And it's like imagine trying to prepare a meal in a kitchen like that. It's just going to take ages. And it's going to be really messy and you might even get food poisoning at the end. You know, it doesn't even work properly. That's kind of like the state of your body when it's got all of this unfinished work. So if we can give it time to 
not have to prepare meals. So we're like, okay, we're not cooking today. What's it going to do instead? It's like, oh yeah, let's clean up all this hair off the floor. Like that's annoying. And all this like dog kibble, like let's just move that to the side. And all these dishes, like, okay, let's clear half of this, these out. And then your body's like, okay, we have space now. So it's like when meal prep comes, when it's time to eat again, your body's like, we can handle all of this. You know, we've got space, we've got a clean environment and, and then it can do all these things. But swapping back and forth between these modes of like fasting and feasting, it, it, it does require your body to, it is a bit stressful for your body. So when you are coming out of this fasting period, you have to be very gentle. You don't want to just throw a bunch of food straight back in. You want to build it up slowly. You might find that taking some probiotics or some people do benefit with some digestive support as well. If your gut is a bit more delicate, you know, we could look at some introducing with some gentle things. So like vegetable juicing can be really nice. I started with passion fruit juice and it was just like, mm, it was delicious. It was really, really good. And you can go for easy things. Like I had some, some fried eggs. They were really nice. The runny yolks, was, mm, delicious. And some meat stock, you know, some chicken broth. And just gently waking the digestive system up and bringing it back online. And one of, the, one of my favorite ways of doing this is to use alternate day fasting or to use shorter period fasts frequently over an extended period of time. So instead of being like, I want to heal and I'm going to do a five day water fast, you know, honestly, five day water fasts are overrated in my opinion. They're like not that helpful. They stress the body out a lot. They're very depleting. You get so much more benefit if you could just do, just like eat every second day for, for, for a week or so, you know, or what I'm doing right now, what I'm experimenting with is to have two days of eating and then one day of not. So it's like, Big, a big eating window to replenish these stores, you know, provide the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients, the calories, stabilize the hormones, give the body a sense of like stability and, and, and normality, and then no food for a day. And doing it this way has been working really, really well for me. It, it's, I'm getting so many more benefits than just doing extended periods of fasting. It's more gentle, it's more effective, and it, and it also helps the body in training it to swap back and forth between this like digestion and detox, digestion and detox, like digestion and deep cleaning, you know? It makes it so that it can do this really quickly and easily, and it makes the transition between them easier as well. And we're not being forceful, you know? We're not being like harsh, we're not being aggressive, we're being very, very gentle. I've actually done two of these already. My next one should be coming up I think today, but my body says, no, I'm hungry today. So again, it's not like a strict like regime, you know, you don't have to force yourself into this like box of healing. Like healing is a gentle process. It's kind, it's soft, and you have to incorporate those things into the things that you do if you want to heal. You know, healing already exists. You don't have to reinvent it. it it's already there. People have done it. Like millions of people have healed like so many different things. You know, you don't have to reinvent it. You just have to find out what it is. Find the common theme. And I can tell you it's adaptability, it's attunement, it's gentleness, it's softness. It's being kind to yourself with the things that are going to help you heal. So I hope you found this video really, really helpful. I hope it's inspired you into maybe doing a bit of research on fasting and seeing if you can figure out a way to fit this into your routine or into your... Um, your healing process at some point. And if you have any questions for me, please do leave me a comment. I will be really happy to see your comment and I'll make sure that I get back to you. I try to answer every single one. Do make sure you tag me because I don't always see them. So make sure you tag me in the comment and I will get back to you and I'll give you an answer to that. So thanks for watching today's video. Hope you found it really helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.